declaration of a few carrying area interest generally to their own. Here you know, we move to adopt the minutes of March the 5th, regular meeting, Mr. Chair, please. Second. Okay. Any errors or omissions? Um, moving to the in camera session, moving out, I think we're missing the times. say that uh, if you have an issue with a council member and, and uh, a conflict of interest, uh, it, it has to be brought towards what's the word? Um, a civil suit. Could you read the letter to us, please? Uh, yes. There are times when council must discuss issues pertaining to wind project developments. There have been questions about what conditions determine when a councillor must recuse himself or herself from a debate that pertains to wind project developments. Only one councillor has recused themselves when the subject of wind turbines has come up for discussion, yet there are others with direct and indirect interest in wind leases who have not done so. I believe it's best for council and public to have clear written instruction to provide clarity to this situation. I request that council instruct the solicitor to provide answers to the questions I've written below. If a councillor has a property with a wind lease or is a party in corporation that has a wind lease, does this present a conflict of interest? 
when the wind company that is the subject of discussion by council is one of the is the one the council has a lease with question mark or when the topic of debate concerns policy for all wind developers example of fees for building permits should the lease signed councillor seek recuse Similarly, if a councillor has a direct family member, father, mother, sibling, child who has a win lease, do the same conditions apply? What would be the policy and procedures on conflict of interest be if a member of staff had a similar situation in described in one and two above? And I'll comment on Barry's. Do you have a conflict of interest? No. Do you have a farm with a wind lease? I do not. You don't yes, own you do. a farm with a wind lease? No, I don't. I uh, verified that with my lawyer. There's not a wind turbine lease on that property. There's no wind turbine lease on the farm you bought? No. There was when the previous owner owned it, but it was never never registered to the deed. <coughs> Therefore, it's a null and void. Is there anyone else on the family or the pet's family members that have leases? Well, that's up to them to do so. I suppose I do. You suppose you do, sir? I guess I could, yeah. You have yes or no. family members, direct family members that have leases? Uh, yes. Okay. David, David, do you have David, a direct family member with a lease? I do, but he's trying to get out of it. Well, then you that have does not matter. But that depends. We, I have to declare a conflict if I feel that I can't make a decision that is not a neutral decision. A um, few various comments. The Municipal Conflict of Interest Act is applied at the individual as opposed to council level, so it would be unusual for council itself to get into such matters. Once a conflict has been declared, the legislation imposes certain obligations upon the member with the conflict not to participate in discussion. When present at a meeting at which matter is considered, where a member either on his or own behalf or while acting for, by, with, or to another, has pecuniary interest, direct or indirect, in any matter, and is present at a meeting of the council or local board for which the matter is considered, the member shall, prior to consideration of the matter, disclose the interest in general nature, shall not take part in discussion or vote on any question in respect and shall not attempt in any way, whether before, during, or after the meeting to influence the voting on any such question. The whole reasonably concise act can be accessed at, uh, it's a great big long email address. Uh, the legislation does not anticipate enforcement by the council itself. And generally speaking, the questions raised in this letter are not council business. Those are the comments that uh, here is. But should you and Mr. DeVille be making decisions and voting on things when you have a conflict of interest? If we feel that we have a conflict, <laughs> we can be fine. If we don't feel we have a conflict, we're not obligated to. Because there's nothing written in stone that says that we have to declare a conflict in this case. Uh, can I ask you a question then what uh, the deputy mayor's <coughs> position would be in that circumstance? He doesn't own any farm with a wind turbine lease on it. No, but my understanding he has family. Uh, it's, it's on my son's place. Right, so what would his position be if a wind turbine issue came up for the same Same as Same as any of us. If we decide that it's a conflict, we declare it. If we believe it's not a conflict, we don't. And then the public have the opportunity uh, to then challenge that counselor. So if you feel that uh, they have a conflict that they're not divulging, you have that opportunity to challenge. Right, but I'm not. Um, I'm not privy to all the counselors' personal business and what their family members or whoever may. That's why may when be. we feel we have a conflict, we have to. Clear. It's up to the individual councillors to declare. So that was then going to back to my question to the deputy mayor. In that circumstance, will you declare? 
to carry on for the discussion. I'm trying to get a sense of where the council sits in the matter, that's all. Well, in, in my case, I would declare if it was a site specific um, issue. Site specific to your to me, property? Yes. But if it's a general uh, township matter which, which involves the whole municipality, I would not declare it. But wouldn't you benefit from the gen general? Uh, uh, Me, no. I don't have a uh, I don't have a termite agreement, so I won't benefit anything. Well, Pedro, what about the deputy mayor? Yeah, yeah, he he does same thing. He I'm saying, like, of course, I'm like, I won't benefit. Benefit me in the way, but no. But you could be helping your son out. I know I would do whatever I could help my son. No, 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 no. John, you have a comment. Point of interest, Mr. Chairman. I think that uh, we're dealing with personal matters of individual council members. It is really none of my business or none of the general public's business. If they think that a person does have a conflict of interest, then they should be charging them and going to the ombudsman and then getting it sorted out. To, to, to say, well, you know, this guy's got a son that's got power or whatever. It's none of it's none of his business, really. What his son even does. So I don't think it's a council's uh, of the public's business to know what the council members do doing either. It's up to the uh, private individual to lay the charges and, and move forward with it if they're that known to, uh, to uh, make an issue of it. That, that's the way we understand the act as well. Thank you for clarifying that. This came up a couple of years ago. At that time, it was what we do. I talked to the member of parliament and he said, I don't think we have a conflict of interest. That's what they that's told me at that time. So I don't change the amount I don't know.
Item number 12 is uh, correspondence from In Motion regarding their meeting coming up on April the 19th. Item 13 is from the Middlesex Working Committee introducing the new detachment commander. <coughs> Item 14 is from Lieutenant Weber uh, regarding the emergency management program compliance for last year. <coughs> 15 is from the Bay Field in Midland uh, Valley Social Protection News. And we have two resolutions. One is from the Township of Bonashare Valley, and it's regarding control over energy projects. Do we ask what any details on that? Is? Can we read the the uh, resolution. <coughs> Whereas the province of Ontario in its wisdom passed the Green Energy Act, removing the municipalities and by extension the public from consultation on energy projects within the community. And whereas people are finding these projects being constructed near their homes without regard to how the placement of those projects affects property values and the rightful enjoyment of their neighbors' lands. And whereas the small green energy projects are exempt <coughs> from even the most basic measures to ensure that one neighbor does not have some regard for others. Be it resolved that the Municipal Council of the Township of Bonacheer Valley, on behalf of their citizens, who have lost any semblance of voice in the placement of energy projects, call upon the province of Ontario to reinstate at least a modest level of control planning over energy projects within our community. And we all support it. The second resolution is from the municipality of Clarington regarding the moratorium on turbines, on wind turbines. And on your desk, there are a couple of items that were not circulated.
So now in this past winter, now we have mud run trucks running through there in the middle of the night when it's nice and pouring down rain. And then they like going out in my field as well while they're out there planting. So anyways, it's become a bigger problem. So three years, approximately three years ago, I was told that the money was in the budget to get that thing fixed properly, went into the other, and get it done with. And it wasn't done. <coughs> so last summer, I was very busy, personally, so I addressed the counselor to do, go about it for me and see what could get done. And I have the minutes from the meeting right here with me, if you want verification, that it was addressed. And in here it says, Oh, where is here? We will not discuss the counselor, but it's inquired about Newell, uh, Newell Road and Wardell Drive repairs. Mr. Bryant informed that work is being done to repair those areas. I personally graded that road <coughs> three times last year so I could get my weeds sprayed, re-sprayed, combined, and get the corn out of there. So I do not see any repairs that have been accomplished last year on that road. If it is, it's my imagination. Now after this winter, the way it's been, it's a, it, instead of a, being a, I sold it as a betterment to the community, now it's a detriment to the community as far as I'm concerned. It's the biggest poor disgrace I've ever seen in the neighborhood yet. So my question is, when are we going to get it fixed? And if we cannot come up with a resolution tonight on it, I would like, I've got an email address here on it, and Frank can email me later on what's going to get done with it. Because there's more people that want to come, but I told them to wait. We would come and deal with this one on one and see what we could get done. And I have one more issue after that. But if we could deal with that one first and get an answer, I would really love to get an answer done. Is there a possibility of getting that done this year? Yeah, we do have the, the base material, Rob, at the landfill. We've got it uh, round up to use. Uh, it is in the budget again this year to, to do the corners. Uh, no, 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 not the corners. Not no, no, no. Well, let me finish. Okay, sorry. Yes, no, I'll let you finish. The, the material's there, and, and we do have it in the budget again this year to do the intersections, but we do have the material now for the base for the whole road. Okay. Area. And it will be equivalent to the opposite side, which has got approximately six inches of good gravel on top of it. It will. It'll have it with you. Yeah. Once you put the base there, you have to put Okay, so the equivalent to the other side, that's done. Yeah. Okay, so let's just cut to the chase and let's just not say it's in the budget, let's say it's going to get done. Yeah. Well, I'm getting really last, tired of this. Yeah, chasing. well last year the, the weather didn't allow us to do a lot of work done that we were working on. But. Well, I got agreed it three times. And I got my crop out of there and I didn't get the wagons wet getting them out of there. Yeah. Well, so there's a lot of work that I did on my own and somebody went to some lake work to get stuff done and nothing got done afterwards. So I wasn't very happy about the correspondence afterwards about it. So as long as that's done this year, I can tell my neighbors, the ones that want to come, and then we will leave it at that for now. That's the intention at this point. Okay, that's good. Second problem is down at the three intersections at the three-way where the pipeline goes through, can we get that fixed? either dig it up and find out the tiles cut off or missing or whatever it is because it's the only point in the middle of the drought that there's still water leaking. And I'm sure it's not a pipeline leaking. Sure. If that's a possible. Because yeah. that's a that's a disgrace. You can't even go through there. You have to slow right down. There's no way around that now. It's it's just a mess from one side to the other. And we put up with that now for the last few years. The water line's done us a great detriment or a great help to Strathroy, but it hasn't done me a world of good either in the end. So if we've got a promise from the council to get this addressed, then that's fine. That's obviously an Eldon's intention to just see that. I know, but it's been Eldon's intention before to get this done. It's <laughs> never got done. You, you do have to deal with weather a little bit too. So. Yeah. Uh, I would like to be ahead of the weather this year. I know there's some other projects that need to be done, but this is three years in the making now. And I did not sell that corner to the township that would be sitting in a lottery. Okay? So it hangs like this, but it won't be in good shape. You could probably go back there right now and get a good start at it, actually. <laughs> but that would be greatly appreciated. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you, Rob.